Hey everybody, welcome. In this episode, we are going to continue our discussion on the details page. So we already did the API in the previous video. Now we're going to do the React part of this. Right now, this is what we have. And these will link to individual page that'll give more information about each one of our customers. So if we click one of these, right now, nothing is there. This really should display the data for customers number two, which is this right here. So to start with this, we're going to create a new page for an individual customer. So new file, customer.js. This is going to be kind of similar to the definition page because in this one, we passed in a search term in the URL and used that to get details on a specific element. So we're going to follow that pattern. So let's go ahead and we will say export default function customer. And we will just say return. And the only thing I wanna return right now is Let's go ahead and return a paragraph. And inside of this, I want to print the ID that is passed in. So I reformatted the return a little bit just to put the parentheses and the fragment on the next line. Now I have to ask ourselves, where does this ID come from? Is it props? No, it's not props. It comes from, just like in definition, the use params hook, which comes from React Router DOM. So let's go ahead and implement that behavior here. We will say import use params from react router dom and then inside of our function we're going to create a variable which we will call id and we're not going to have it quite like that we're actually going to have it inside of curly braces and set this to a call to use params like so now surrounding a variable in curly braces will grab the property on an object so use params returns an object, we only want the ID, and that's how we can assign it to a variable called ID. So in theory this should work, but there's no way to access this right now. Even if we do visit a customer like this, nothing happens. So we need to deal with the routing. So let's go back and we want to render this component when we hit the customer's path with an ID passed in. So it'll look pretty similar to this, just slightly different. So let's go ahead and copy paste and it'll be customers slash colon ID. The element is going to be customer singular. So let's go ahead and import that. Import customer from dot slash pages slash customer. Fabulous there. Now, when we visit the page, in theory, we should get the number displayed on the page. So far, so good. So now we just gotta take this ID and make a request to the appropriate API endpoint. And we can do this just by appending the ID to the URL for the request. So to do this, we want it to happen immediately, one time. So we will use use effect. Be sure to check out the previous video on use effect if you are not familiar, but we will say use effect. And this is going to come from react and i will define this after any variables and we just invoke use effect this is going to take two important arguments the first being the callback function and the next being the dependency array which i'll leave empty which will make it execute this function once on page load so just for my sanity i always like to console log it's a little overkill but it helps you notice if anything is weird or if you're in an infinite loop or whatever it may be so we'll just say use effect here. So now on page load, we should get one use effect. I get two because I'm in dev mode and I have strict mode enabled. So that's why you see a two here. If yours is one, it's no big deal. So now let's invoke fetch. I like to start with the basic structure. So I'll say fetch dot then dot then. And then fetch is going to take a URL, which we will define above. So let's push this down, const URL. This is going to be HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8000. You will probably notice we're having some repeating information. This is here as well as here. So it's a good area to introduce bugs, or I guess I should say bad area. So we probably want to fix that at some point and put the URL in one location and just refer to that location. This is fine for now. Um, just because it's easier. So we will just say localhost 8000 and we might change that to a reference later. This is going to be slash API slash customers slash plus ID. Perfect. Now for then, these are both going to take a function. So it'll look like this, same here. And they will both have a parameter. So this one is going to be called 
response and this one is going to be called data. Inside of this function we will just say return response.json and then inside of here we will set state. So we will say set customer and pass in data.customer. A couple of things we need to create the state and just before we do that, I wanted to explain we're saying data.customer because if you take a look at the responding API, it says customer here. So if we want to jump in and grab this object, well, then we will want to say dot customer. If you're working with an API that had multiple properties, well, then you wouldn't necessarily have to jump in like that. All right, so let's go ahead and create this state. So this will also be from React. So we'll say use state and I will define that here. So const and we will have customer set customer and assign it use state and then down here we can conditionally render it if the customer is set so we will make a ternary and say customer with the question mark if we have a customer let's go ahead and render the customer dot id otherwise we will just render null saving that let's take a look at the page go over here we get two and it seems to be working and what we can do now is we can put in all of the properties for the customer instead of just the customer ID. So what I would probably do is make this a div and then inside of this div we can put multiple things. So we will make the first one a paragraph and then we're going to take this line and paste it twice. So we'll say ID name and industry there we go save let's take a look at the page now and there we go we get two taco bell and the industry is tacos let's go ahead and try the other ids just to see some options yep seems to be good overall not too bad once you got it working you can of course remove the console logs if you have any problems with that i would likely put a return link as well to go back to the full list so we can just do that at the bottom of our return here. So after the customer data, we will put a link, which will have a two, and this will be to slash customers. Go back. Saving that, let's check it out. We have to import link, so we'll scroll up to the top. This is in React Router DOM, link. There we go, let's try it. So go back and there we go. So that's what I wanted to cover in this episode. The next episode, we're going to figure out what happens with 404s. Right now, our application just breaks. If you want to see that, you can put in something in the URL that just doesn't make sense. So for example, we could go to slash pizza. So we need to make an appropriate page when something is not found. So far, so good. Stay tuned for the next episode. I'll see you there. Peace out.